Hello viewers, Alan here again, back in the workshop after a bit of a layoff. Uh, I've been away for a bit of a holiday with the family and uh, unfortunately finished up catching one of the worst colds I've had for a hell of a long time. So that's kept me out of the workshop for uh, oh, more than a week, I guess. Still back in here now and since I haven't done anything else in the workshop uh, over the last week or so, I thought I'd uh, do a quick video uh, today uh, showcasing or explaining something which I did quite a while ago as an upgrade to my floor standing drill press and it overcame a problem. Um, it was very difficult changing the, uh, the belts and the speeds uh, to get different speeds for the, the spindle and I got fed up with it and decided to do something about it. So that's what we're going to have a look at. Uh, unfortunately I can't find any photos of the drill press uh, in the uh, condition it was when I received it but it was an 8 speed unit with um, an intermediate pulley and two belts. Um, I'll give you some idea of what it looked like. Although as, it's, as you're seeing in this picture, the intermediate pulley's been deleted and there's a VFD for the variable speed. So that's the end state. So let's have a chat about how we got there. So as this uh, drill press was originally supplied, it had um, uh, eight spindle speeds, which were achieved via an intermediate pulley. And uh, there were two belts, of course. So to make many of the changes, you had to fool around moving two belts, not just one, which was uh, very inconvenient. So adjusting the belt tension on this thing uh, originally, this uh, block here would sit on the end of the, the round horizontal shaft of the radial drill, and motor bolted on the back here. And you, I don't know whether you can see very well, but there's a little sort of a grub screw type thing here, which bears on the back of this thing. And this is uh, the way you could tension the rear of the two belts is a fiddle ass thing at best because the um, there was a belt guard around it to, uh, to start with and of course another belt sitting over the top going from here to the motor and so on and you had to loosen this bolt uh, loosen a bolt down in there off and oh, it was hopeless and there wasn't any specific method for tightening the front belt it just seemed to have to get one that was about the right length so it was a very um, in my view a very poor arrangement so what did I do I guess the, the first thing I did was to decide I didn't want to have this uh, intermediate pulley anymore so we uh, ditched that um, and uh, so that would of course then limit me to four speeds um, so I bought a, a new motor, three phase motor and a VFD so I had the infinite speed control and uh, to preserve the torque at low speed I had the gearing from the four step pulleys so it's a combination of the VFD variable speed and uh, like having four gears if you like and I could do away with this stupid little thing here which is very unsatisfactory so I made uh, a new one of these um, to suit my new situation and we'll go and have a look at that. Okay so here we can see the, the detail of the the motor mounting um, and um, these two pieces were made from one piece of 150 by 50 um, rectangular hollow section tube and I just cut it in half to create two pieces 150 by 25 and this back piece is still the full 150 and I extended it this way by welding some uh, tapered plates on these tapered plates um, why did I do it that way well I had a piece of 150 by 50 tube so that's where I started um, and to make this piece which obviously needs to nest inside that I cut it in half down the middle, you can possibly just see there was a seam there and I cut a stripe or a, yeah, stripe out down the middle and welded it back together so that this piece could um, fit over the top and I deliberately left room for a spacing washer top and bottom to make sure there was a bit of clearance and <coughs> excuse me, as I originally made this these uh, extensions, I didn't think I would need those uh, I think I, I was expecting to be able to just make this come straight over the top of that but I forgot about the power cord um, 
and to leave room for that when this piece is around I needed to offset the pivot point further away from the back so that's why it's like that this piece here is the tensioning mechanism so if we just put it back together you can see how that works you swing that back around again so it comes around and these you can see I think clearly enough how this is made um, I used um, joining nuts because it just made it easy they're pre-threaded uh, although as it turned out I didn't use that they just happen to be convenient length pieces of appropriate stuff that I could weld a spacer on there and that uh, fits on like that the geometry is such that the pin here can go that side of the centre line of these two. So when the tension goes on it has a bit of an over centre action which locks it in there. And you can see uh, how that works. And um, I've got quite a bit of adjustment as you would have perhaps noticed here to uh, deal with a uh, change in belt size or if the belt stretches over time. So just go back to the open view of it. So this um, plate here is boxed in slightly on, on the end here. That was just a piece of angle iron welded on the end to create a mounting point for this um, adjuster bracket. Um, these holes, I think they were just there from something else. So I was just reusing material again. So that's it really, quite simple, but it's very effective. So that makes it easy to uh, to change the, the belt speed. I'll just put it all back together again to, to show that. As you can see, changing belt speed is pretty simple. Just let the tension off around there. Same on the other end, drop down to the next. A bit awkward here because the torch is in there anyway. And then, there you go. It's as simple as that. <clears throat> so that makes it very easy to change between the four ratios of uh, pulley ratios and the speed control uh, on the VFD takes care of the rest. So it's quite easy for me to go from uh, really slow, <laughs> I don't know what that is, probably about a hundred, maybe a bit less than a hundred. You get a pretty worthwhile speed just on that first range. It's quite easy to go from there. To, uh, so that, that's um, slowest on the high speed. And I, I guess that's about three, four thousand. I'm not sure exactly. Pretty quick anyway. I could probably take out more than that playing around with the VFD. But that's at 15 hertz. I suppose I could work it out from that, 25 hertz, so I guess that's half speed, half of the original speed for that pulley arrangement. But I, I've got the, the upper limit on the VFD set to 60 hertz, that's what's really uh, stopping it from going uh, way over speed. Anyway. It was a fairly easy project. It did take me a little while, a bit of fiddling around with the geometry, but um, uh, I did that about 10 years ago, something like that, and it's proved to be a very useful um, uh, change.
So we'll start off with a half inch drill. Let's punch a half inch hole through our, through our bit of 3 8 without any particular drama. So we'll now follow it up with a 1 inch, see how we go with that. Bit of a test for a drill that's it's, uh, it's punching a bit above its uh, weight class trying to do a 1 inch drill, but we'll see how we go. I was leaning into it a bit hard. Let's speed it up just a touch. A bit more torque with pushing the speed up slightly. Uh, it's no trouble at all now. There we go. So it's turning out some good chips. Yeah, and I just needed to bump the speed up slightly to uh, keep the torque up. But yeah, I've got to be happy with that. Now, how well you'll be able to see that, but uh, perhaps you can see it actually. It's a pretty clean sort of hole, actually. Quite impressive. This is a follow up as well to the, uh, the chuck. That got out of a good got a good grip on that shank. You can see how the chuck jaws are pressed into the uh, the shank, and even though it stalled the motor at one stage when I had it cranked really down, it didn't the drill didn't slip in the chuck. So that chuck's obviously a very good sort of item as well.